grab your big book, your pen, your highlighter, and notepad and get ready to hear and apply some of the solution from the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous through the experience, strength, and hope of Nikki M. To have a question addressed in a future episode of Noodle It Out with Nikki, please send an email to noodlewithnikki at gmail.com and Nikki is spelled with two Ks. To get a more interactive experience with Nikki as she noodles out life and recovery questions using the Big Book of Alcoholics Anonymous, you can get a link to her weekly Noodle It Out with Nikki meeting held live on Zoom every Monday morning at 9 o'clock Eastern Time. The information to that meeting is in the show notes of this podcast. God morning, God afternoon, and God evening to all. My name is Justin B., and I am a son of an all-powerful and all-loving God and a qualifying member of multiple fellowships, living in the miracle of recovery, and I'm here with the intelligent agent, spearhead of God's ever-advancing creation, and my co-host, Nikki M. Nikki, please take a minute and share with us what you have on your tight schedule today that you'd like to, the, to, to give us an example of what a day might look like. Okay, well, this is, I love this question, especially for Mondays. So Mondays look like this for me. I get up, of course, and I get real centered with God. I normally do not take calls because I'll get up. I will grab my phone, of course, check our noodle with our what we have a WhatsApp. Not only join the please join the Rico 12 community and we're fully self-supporting at noodle um, on Rico 12. So that's where everything can go with this family. We're part of this family, but we have a noodle chat too. And I usually check that because that's where my mind gets right into the big book. It's like right away upon awakening, I do these things I because it gets me right into God thought. Then, of course, I've got to get my red lipstick on and my bath co- my, my, my bathrobe on for noodle it out with Nikki. So that's why I don't take a lot of phone calls in the morning. And then I instantly after, now we start, you know, doing our podcast. Then it's about noon. And I, I'm a faster in the morning. I've had my coffee, some water. And then I start living life. Mondays, I don't do much because I am halfway through the day so pumped up on God dope. I got to get out there and show people I'm not a glum lot and start living. Today, my daughter's here from California. Miracles, if anyone's listening and your kids hate you and you and you just like thought you, you know, you ruined them, that's a lie. That's a lie. If you sponsor and take care of one of God's children, I'm going to tell you right now, God will take care of your babies. So we're going to go out and celebrate life. She wants to get me a new iPhone because this one's overheating with my ice pack on it. Love you, Justin. (laughs) (laughs) Beautiful, beautiful day, beautiful stuff. Thank you for sharing that, Nikki. Um, You know, as you mentioned, uh, Noodle It Out with Nikki is one of the projects that we're doing under the RICO 12 umbrella of of recovery resources. And we're grateful to have you in this umbrella and and doing this. Um, If any of you out there in the listening world want to get involved, whether it's jump in on the WhatsApp groups that we have, we have a Noodle It Out with Nikki WhatsApp group. We have a RICO 12 WhatsApp group. Um, I'll have the links in the show notes to get in there, as well as the links to all the other RICO 12 projects that we have going on. Our mission is to educate and help and support addicts of all varieties of the commonality of all addictions, as well as a common solution that can work for virtually all. We really do subscribe to the idea in the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous that, quote, rarely have we seen a person fail who has thoroughly followed our path. All right. So if you are willing to help out with some donations, because Rico 12 is a self-supporting service and we are uh, doing a lot of work out here, please consider donating at the link that we have in the show notes The where you can become a spearhead, a spearhead just with Nikki and I become a spearhead agent of God's ever advancing creation and help this move forward. All right. Let's dive into the big book here in the Noodle It Out with Nikki M uh, uh, podcast and Uh, project where we bring a couple of questions from our own lives, the lives of people we work with in recovery and from the listening audience to the big book. So everybody get your big book out, get your pen ready, your highlighter ready, and get ready to run around it and take some notes. And uh, let's get right into it. You know, this last episode that you and I recorded, Nikki, we talked a little bit about, well, we talked a little bit about complacency and avoidance and procrastination. Then we talked a little bit about boundaries to help um, set those things. Um, And we'll get into boundaries at another time. But one thing that you brought up kind of brought about the topic here or brought something into it. You know, you said, hey, some days I fast and it's hard to go out and where there's food everywhere. And (laughs) and a lot of people call that a trigger, you know, and 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 I talk to a lot of people. Um, I take calls 
daily from somebody who says, I'm triggered here. I need to talk this out. Now, I've heard you speak before. Trigger is not found in the big book. That word is not there. In fact, there's some some antidotes or contradictions to it in there. Let's dive in and talk a little bit about big book, big book knowledge and wisdom about this concept of being triggered or being uh, influenced by outside influences. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your thoughts on that, Nikki? Okay, well, triggers. That I, I, you know me. Anybody listening, I speak two languages, English and big book. Now, if you know me, I have a I have a boyfriend. He lives in Luxembourg. He speaks seven languages. His worst language is English. So we, you know, but we speak God, our souls speak. So number one, make sure you are armed with the facts about the language you speak. And if you speak big book and the word triggers not in there, why are you using it? See, we're in a 12-step program, so we must speak the language of the book. That's, that's number one. Okay, so trigger, as Justin said, I fast on Wednesday. See where religious people are right. All, page 87, all religions fast. So that's, that's very much helped me. But I go out. Justin, I don't even have to go out sometimes. You know, my mom lives with me. Um, the disease of alcoholism destroys a family. So it's worked out for us. We're, we're, I mean, God's plan is amazing. However, my mom sometimes on Wednesdays will fry bacon. Okay, now that permeates through the whole house. Or she'll cook, you know, we're Lebanese. She'll make some like beautiful something. And I'm like, mom, really? Like today of all days? What do I do? I keep my mind on God. See, page 23, this all centers in my mind. How bad do I want it? Let's just start here on page 12. Because we're talking about triggers. It's not in the book. So make sure that you're on page 12 and that, Halfway down, it says, thus was I convinced that God is concerned with us humans when we want God enough. I circled enough in red ink because I, and I highlight squared it because I need this enough. I want, have to want God enough more than I want anything else. See, go down a little further and it says, I, we're on page 12. I had needed and wanted God. I don't need and want bacon. I don't need and want money and men. I don't need and want crystal meth and the need to be right. I need and want God. So I'm armed with the facts. You got to always arm yourself with the facts in this program, everybody. See, I don't need that cupcake. I think I do, but I need God. What does that look like, Nikki? I hate God. Well, I need to be responsible. And it's not responsible to eat that cupcake. It's not responsible. I need that hit of crack. It is not responsible. Mom, mothers, fathers, sons, daughters to need and want crack and alcohol and food, which is freely everywhere you go is food. That's that's the number one addiction. I I was saying to someone, oh, my daughter's in town from California. And she's watching me work, my soul surgery. And um, she said, mom, what's the hardest addiction? Well, me, I'm always like, give me a heroin addicted, Oxycontin, you name it, benzo filled addict any day over a codependent or Al-Anon because they never can see where they're wrong. It's like, if, if only they would do, if only they get better, it's all them. It's never me. Look, I'm so helpful. No, you're controlling, martyring, manipulating, and managing, which leads to murder. Um, mom, oh, Al-Anon's out there, codependents. And then I was working with, a, with one of my sponsees in the UK, and he comes from the rooms of GA, Gambling Anonymous, and Cocaine Anonymous. That's where we met, CA, because I snort fear <laughs> and anger a lot. So I, I qualify in that room. Long story short, I asked him, I said, honey, I got to take this call, but let me ask my sponsor who's been here for a while and he's a heavy hitter in the book. He knows what he's talking about. What's your hardest addiction, sir? He's to sponsor. He said, food, food addiction. It's everywhere. And that's sober a lot of the time, people. It's coming for us. Something's coming. And so we're back to triggers and we're just going to sit here on the cupcakes because they're everywhere right? Let's just take one thing, focus on that right now. And so I have to want 
and need God enough. Now we're on page 12. Now let's go further into the book on page 100. We'll roll four, we'll roll four. Because now, now we're on 12. We're at the beginning. So we're armed with the facts. We need to want God. We've read the instructions in the book. And now we're on page 100. We've done some step work. And now we're here. See, assuming we are spiritually fit, what does that mean, friends? You're in a 12-step program. You have to work the 12 steps every day. Assuming you're spiritually fit, page 30, you smash the idea that you're like everybody else and you're doing this work. Assuming you're spiritually fit, you're working a 12-step program. People in the back, not an 11-step and certainly not a 13-step. If you're new or you're not even... You're not even in the 12-step room and you're like, what is Nikki talking about 13-step? That's where you go in and you do nothing but try and scope out people and use it as Tinder and Hinge. Oh, and as a dating site. You know, one of those things. Remember before, I'm old school, so they didn't have any of those apps. I'd had to like go to a bar and linger around, even though I'm not a big drinker, and just look for a man. Nurse on like one drink all night, but I'm looking for my drug of choice, a single man, right? So assuming I'm spiritually fit, I can do all sorts of things addicts are not supposed to do. Hey, like go around triggers. I hate that word. I'm getting triggered just saying it. I'm getting all weird talking about it. It's, it's getting me weird. Er. People, we're still on page 100, have said Nikki must not go where there's, oh, liquor, drugs, men, money, food. Oh, you know, clothing. I like to, I'm not a big shopper, but I like a new outfit. I like a nice pair of kitten heels. I, I, I can't have any of that in my house. I have to shun my friends who do all that. I must avoid everything. I must avoid moving pictures with, with oh, remember, I'm a fantasy addict, everybody. I was a Twilight mom and I was team Edward Cullen and I went into a deep fantasy, literally that a vampire is going to come save me. It went weird. I can't look at those things. I must not go anywhere. People must hide everything from me. This is page 101. We mustn't think or be reminded about alcohol, drugs, food, men, women, our children. Yeah, You name it. You name it. I can't look at that picture. That girl's skinnier and prettier than me. Like, I mean, this goes deep. And then it says, these are facts. Our experience shows this is not necessarily so. I can go anywhere, Justin, because I'm spiritually fit. Remember, I didn't see my lover in Luxembourg for two and a half years. Neither of us could get on a plane during COVID. And I just sat and sponsored. I was able to go anywhere and everywhere, even unvaccinated during COVID. I was safe and protected. The promises are real. It says God will keep you safe and protected. If you don't believe the promises, why are you here? Let's read a little further down for those who are triggered. God, saying that word makes me weirder. We, that's Justin and Nikki M. See, we meet these conditions every day. Justin, you told me you're a food addict. You see food everywhere, every day. You live in America, sir. And I know that stuff is, oh, it's, it's they, they, this food porn is everywhere. TV, every, and you guys have drive throughs I live in downtown Toronto. They don't have that. I got to walk for it. <laughs> Every day we meet these conditions. Uh, love addicts, sex addicts, there are hot, hot people everywhere. There are people, some of us don't care if they're hot, everywhere, we'll take them. When I'm in blackout, I don't care what you look like, I'll just take you, you're breathing. An addict who cannot meet these conditions, what conditions, Nikki? Being spiritually fit, being spiritually fit, still has an addict mind. Line out, page 23, it centers in my mind. See, life is a trigger. Why don't you put that at the top of this page on page 101? Life is a trigger and there's something the matter with my spiritual sp status. See, the only chance for sobriety would be someplace like the Greenland ice caps. And even there, an Eskimo is going to run up with a big old cupcake how about a hot chick? How about a hot guy? How about any person? How about a big bottle of scotch, which it says? And how about a big bag of cocaine? How about all the social, hey, young people, how about all the social media apps and endless internet? You, how about all the gaming you can imagine? Oh, my gamblers out there, all the money you can imagine, right? 
And then that's going to ruin everything. And then it says, ask any person who sent her person away. Ask anyone. I like to change the language in here because they're talking to the, you know, ask any woman who sent her husband away. Well, that's a different world right now. We're living, ask any person who has sent themselves to distant places on the theory that we can escape the problem, the addiction problem, the alcoholism problem. Because Justin, I'm from Orange County, California, Anaheim. The sun, sea, and sand aren't everything. I moved to Toronto. I was pregnant, young, 18. And I thought I better leave because, you know, Haley's dad, that's my daughter. He's the problem. I came to Toronto and the problem really came with me. And me and baby daddy and and Haley, oh my God, we make a little three-person unit because God's plan was bigger than mine. Actually, I scared him right out of having any more kids. So we really, he's really grateful I made Haley because That she lives out there with him now. How would I have known that at 18 years old, Justin, the baby I made then, all the things that have happened have served a purpose to serve this man, my high school sweetheart, and we can all remain friends. I mean, I didn't, I had no idea this was going to be the plan. God had a bigger plan. So you think life is a trigger. How about God has a plan? Oh, where did that come from? Life is a trigger. God has a plan (laughs) way bigger than mine. Wow, that that's a really cool connection that happened there. Life is a trigger. God has a plan. God knows that when I go out, when I'm looking out my window right now, and this isn't happening right now, but I know every single day the same event happens. And I don't know what time it is. Gratefully, I'm not looking at the clock and seeing when that happens. But I have a group of people that run by my run down the street in their workout clothes that are can be a quote unquote trigger. That if I'm focused on that, that's what it's going to be. But God has a plan. I get to look out my window and see beautiful trees, beautiful sky, beautiful rose bushes, and just see beauty. And and I don't have to focus on the uh, the fantasy, the objectification, those types of things. I don't have to do that. And what a beautiful thing. So I want to dig a little bit more into this because, you know, on page 101, um, uh, page sorry, page 100, assuming we are spiritually fit. And then on page 101, we meet these conditions every day. Um, or, or the sentence before that, our experience shows that this is not necessarily so that we can't go into these places, that we can't do these things. Nikki, how do I know I'm in fit spiritual condition? How do I get in fit spiritual condition? And how do I stay in fit spiritual condition so that these quote unquote triggers, these whatever they are in my life, don't derail me. Okay. So you may have to interject as I talk, just put a finger up because I, how do I stay? You know, how do I get, get in fit? fit Let's do that one first. Yes. How do you get, you follow the exact instructions of this book. This book is a magic book. It's a treasure map. It's not the power. This is a treasure map to the power. So you follow the instructions. You believe the promises. Because how do you get spirit? Like, you, how do you get? How do you know if you're spiritually fit? That was one of them. How do you know? How do yes, I so know? That was actually, yes, yes. Yeah. How do I know? Because I love that one. Right when you said that, I instantly it came to my mind. The promises are coming true. I'm at perfect peace and ease alone, page 75. I recoil from all of that like a hot flame. See, I know what it's like to recoil because I don't look at anything else besides this man. I, I have never been able to do that. I've always had someone in the back, something in the back, an, another plan, a plan B. This is it. I recoil from anything like a hot flame around the man I love right now. I, I, I'm in shock. I've been reborn. I'm at perfect peace and ease alone. If you said, Nikki, you can never... You know, there's still more restrictions coming because of global warming, if that's what they want to call it. I don't, I don't want to get into that. Oh, that's an outside issue. No, this book says it will solve all my problems. This is my experience, strength, and hope. This is my experience. If you don't like it, get a sponsor. So I know I am in fit spiritual condition when I recoil from anything like a hot flame. I know that I'm, hey, my financial fears fall from me. I can go and do anything. How about this? I know I'm in fit spiritual condition when I trust my infinite God. When what you say, do, 
think doesn't affect me when I'm placed in a position of neutrality, safe and protected by my creator. I know I'm in spiritual, fit spiritual condition. Here's another one. When you say to me, oh, well, Nikki, I, it's like, no, I'm the intelligent agent spearhead of God's ever advancing creation. Oh, but no, Nikki, you're the, the, no, 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 I'm not hearing it. Because you're complaining about me. And guess what? I'm created in God's perfect image. So you can shh. Or I can shh, walk away. I have the power of choice. See, oh, you can't say that to me. Say whatever you want. That goes back into boundaries. You're going to trigger me. I'd say whatever you want because I stand in the truth. This book tells me that I trust an infinite God. This book tells me that he is the father. I am the child. This book tells me that he is the director. I am the agent. That's how I stay in fit spiritual condition. So how do I know? How do I do it? I work a 12-step program. I work all 12 steps. And here it is every day. What page is that on, Nikki? Page 85. Let's just all roll there and I'll read it slowly over all of us. Thank you, God, for giving me eyes to read. Thank you, God, for giving me brains to use. I got to get in the sub. It says right here, page 85. See, it's easy to let up on the spiritual program of action and rest on my laurels. Google laurels if you don't know what it means. I am headed. There's a warning. Nikki is headed for trouble. You know, if I do, if I do what? Go back to the line before if I rest on my laurels for thinking addiction alcoholism the disease of it is a subtle foe it's a liar i am not cured of this disease of alcoholism i have a daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of my spiritual condition well nikki i'm maintaining my spiritual condition i'm sorry madam it says improve conscious contact you can maintain your house but if i don't improve it my, my house is 125 years old. Justin, if I don't improve this thing, it's not going to have any value, but it does. Thank you, God. And it says every day. That means every day, my people, family, chosen family. Every day is a day when we, doesn't say I, when we must carry the vision of God's will. What's God's will? Did you do a step four and five? God's will into all our activities. And we talked about it on another podcast. All our activities is our family, our job, and all of God's children, the newcomer. How can I best serve thee? See, Justin, page 420. I'm not allowed to keep my mind. You talked about jo joggers running by. I must, page 420, I must keep my magic magnifying mind. Everybody, this book has stories and know them, and look for the solution in them. I must keep my magic magnifying mind. Above that, I wrote my obsessive mind on my acceptance. Everything is the way God wants it, Nikki. And off my expectations. And man, I have a lot of expectations. And what does that lead to? Well, you guys all know. Just to resentments. And that will kill me. For my serenity is directly proportional to my level of acceptance. See, when I remember this, when I remember this about my magic magnifying mind, staying on acceptance, everything's the way it's supposed to be, God's given, and the obsession of gratitude, I can see I've never had it so good. And then it says, I love this, it says, thank God for AA. And then everybody just, there's a big blank space at the end of that page. Just start thanking God. Thank God for AA. Thank God for Justin B. Thank God that I have legs. I can read. I have a brain. I have my healthy daughter. I haven't spent a day in the hospital with my children. I, um, I have the power of choice. I mean, you want me to go on and on? Thank God I have big hair, don't care, curly hair. You know, I mean, I can go on and on, Justin. Love it. Nikki, there's so much there. And, and we're going to wrap this up here. But uh, man, I love this. Uh, thank you for jumping into the assuming we're spiritually fit. And how do I know that I'm spiritually fit? And you referenced all the, 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 the promises. And there's a lot of promises in the book. But the ones that you specifically referenced are the step nine promises from pages 84 and 85. And how I want to close this out um, is with reading the next paragraph after the the promises there from page this is on page 84 so this is how we're going to close this out everybody 
Uh, are these extravagant promises? We think not. They are being fulfilled among us, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. They will always materialize if we work for them. Everybody keep working for them. Keep coming back. It works when I work it. So work it. You are worth it. Worth it.